The state of Karnataka is bordered by the Arabian Sea to the west, Goa to the northwest, Maharashtra to the north, Telangana to the northeast, Andhra Pradesh to the east, Tamil Nadu to the south and Kerala to the southwest. Karnataka boasts of geography that has all types of topographical variations. The state exhibits a splendid mix of lofty mountains, coastal plains, residual hills and plateaus. Karnataka is located in the region where the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats converge into the Nilgiri Hills. The topography of Karnataka basically reflects the region's geology. Karnataka can be primarily divided into three distinct geographical regions, the coastal plains, the Sahyadri and the Deccan Plateau. The total area of Karnataka is 1,91,791 square kilometer and it ranks the sixth in area among other states in India. The Karnataka region has underlying volcanic rock produces a soil known as Riga, the humus-rich, cotton-growing black soil of India. By contrast, the soils of the adjacent Karnataka Plateau are generally porous and fertile, except in the river basins where they are loamy and somewhat fertile. The state of Karnataka is blessed with magnificent forests. The impressive blanket of forest greenery existing in the state is composed of five different forest types, namely evergreen forest, moist deciduous forest, dry deciduous forest, scrub forest, and unwooded forest. Some of the famous forests of Karnataka are Badra Reserved Forest in Chikmagaluru, Bannargadda National Park in Bangalore, Kudarmukh National Park in Chikmagaluru, Nagarhole National Park in Hansur, and Hanshi National Park in Uttara Kannada district. The rivers in Karnataka are a source of water for drinking and household purposes. They are integral to agriculture, a source of hydropower, and used for transportation in certain areas. Karnataka is endowed with many riverine systems, broadly classified into two types, namely the east flowing large river Krishna and Kaveri with their tributaries and the short west flowing rivers. Some of the east flowing rivers that are worth mentioning are Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri and the west flowing rivers include Saraswati, Kali, Gangavali, Netravati, Varahi, Eganashni, etc. Being the sixth largest state in India by area wise, Karnataka possesses about 6% of the country's total surface water resources of about 17 lakh million cubic meters. Western Ghats in the state of Karnataka stretch from Dandeli in the north to Mangalore in the south. And from the edge to the western coastline, they go as far as Kurg and Madikeri. There are 1,416 named mountains in Karnataka. The highest and the most prominent mountain is Mulayangri. Mulayangri is located in the Chandradrona hill ranges of the Western Ghats of Chikmagaluru district with a height of 1,925 meters. It is the highest peak in Karnataka and also the highest peak in the Krishna river basin. Some of the notable mountains in the state are Kodachadri, Baba Budangri, Tadi and Mol, Pushpagri and Gopal Swami Hills. Karnataka witnesses three types of climate. The state has a dynamic and erratic weather that changes from place to place within its territory. Due to its varying geographic and physiographic conditions, Karnataka experiences climatic variations that range from arid to semi-arid in the Plateau region, sub-humid to humid tropical in the Western Ghats and humid tropical monsoon in the coastal plains. April and May are the hottest months in Karnataka. During these two months, the weather turns very dry and uncomfortable in the state. Karnataka experiences lowest temperature during the month of January and then the temperature gradually increases. The monsoon season begins in June and lasts until September. During the month of June, humidity and temperature soars in the state. The 2019 Karnataka floods and landslides have caused loss of life and enormous damage to crops and critical infrastructure. 91 human lives are lost 
due to floods and landslides. Karnataka declared 23 of its 30 districts droughted. It was reported on September 28, 2018. At least 16 of these are perpetually drought prone. Flora and fauna of Karnataka are representatives of the rich biodiversity in the state. Wildlife in Karnataka is preserved in the protected areas of the state like national parks, wildlife sanctuaries and bird sanctuaries. Eucalyptus trees are found in abundance in the western ghats. Teak, rosewood and cashewina beautify Karnataka. Other tree species found here are Epigenia mysorensis, Diptrocarpus syndicus, Caryota urans, Delenia pentagena and Zisius mauritania. In the forests of Karnataka, there are about 25% of elephants and about 20% of tigers. Mammals such as leopard, slender loris, gaur, wild pig, pangolin, malabar giant squirrels, mouse deer, barnet macaque, common langur, and barking deer are found in Karnataka. The bird species found in the state are ruby throated bulbul, Indian shama, malabar whistling thrush, orange headed thrush, paradise flycatcher, great Indian hornbill, cormorant, etc. The population of Karnataka is 6.41 crores. The male population is 3.09 crores. The female population is 3.01 crores. And the transgender population is 70,000. There are 953 females per thousand male in Karnataka. Although there are other ethnic tribes, the scheduled tribe population comprises some of the better known tribes like Soligas, Yaravas, Thodas and Siddhis and constitute 6.95% of the total population of Karnataka. Some of the other tribes found in the state of Karnataka are Adiyan, Baucha, Bil, Chenchu, Chenchwar, Dubla, Alpati, etc. Karnataka played a very important role in shaping the present-day Indian religion and philosophy. According to 2011 census of India, 84% of the population are Hindu, 12.92% are Muslims, 0.7% are Jains, 1.87% are Christians and 0.2% are the Buddhists. The overall literacy rate of Karnataka is 75.60% and the female literacy is 68.08%. Karnataka possesses a rich cultural heritage compounded by the contributions of the successive dynasties which have fostered various religions and philosophies that in turn have influenced literature, architecture, folklore, music, painting and other arts. The people of Karnataka speak Kannada. It is a member of the Dravidian language family and the official language of the state. It is the second oldest of the four major Dravidian languages with a literary tradition the oldest Kannada inscription was discovered at the small community of Halmidi and dates to about 450 C. Carnatic classical music lies at the very center of Karnataka music and dance traditions. From ancient times, Karnataka has contributed largely in ascertaining its structure and form. It has also presented the world with some of the major composers and performers. Some of the musical instruments found in the state are Nagra. Nagra is a conical drum played with the two sticks. It is a part of orchestra used by folk music player. Nagra is made up of animal leather. Usually a buffalo or a camel hide is stretched across the round bow shaped body. The bowl is iron made, clay or some other metal. Ropes interlock to keep the leather in place. The tamte is a hand drum from the southern Indian state of Karnataka from the old Mysore region. It is made of goat hide stretched over a circular frame bound with an iron ring similar to the parai. Tamburi The tamburi is very similar to the tanpura, despite being smaller and played with the bow. A tanburi is played as a melodic instrument. 
unlike the tanpura each string has a fundamental tone with its own spectrum of overtones which makes a rich and vibrant sound due to interactive harmonic resonance that will support the external tones played by the soloist gardi gombe gardi gombe is a folk dance in which dancers dress in suits made of bamboo sticks the karaga in a dance performed by the tiglas is a metal pot on which stands a tall floral pyramid and which is balanced on the carrier's head patakunita in karnataka is a popular folk dance form extremely popular among the inhabitants of the mysore region garavar kunita of karnataka is typically performed by groups of 10 to 11 men they usually belong to the singing tribes of the kauravas who are strong worshippers of lord shiva yakshagana yakshagana is a folk theater form of karnataka and it is an ancient art it relates with the many of the traditions and conventions of sanskrit theater or drama particularly those of the puravaranga and the existence of the character vidushak ugadi ugadi also known as gudi powda in other regions of the country ugadi marks the beginning of the brand new year legend as it that hindu lord brahma created the universe on this day people decorate their houses with the pretty flowers and colors and temples are also beautifully decorated hampi festival the hampi festival celebrated in november is one of the most important festivals in karnataka celebrated on a grand level this cultural extravaganza is organized in hampi which is a unesco world heritage site popular for its ancient temples during this festival artists and musician famous in their fields showcase their talents kambara festival celebrated every year between the months of november and march kambala festival is organized by farming communities of dakshina kannada and udupi the main attraction of this two day festival is the buffalo race wherein more than 150 specially trained buffaloes partake mysore dasara mysore dasara is a royal festival celebrating victory of truth over evil legend has it that the goddess chamundeswari or durga slew the demon mahishasuran on vijayadashmi day dashara is a 10 day festival in the region culminating on vijayadashmi or the 10th day <laughs> mysore masala dosa the mysore masala dosa is another form of dosa with chutney or paste applied to it it is a crisp dosa with red chutney and mashed potato filling in it The dosa is served with a white and red coconut chutney along with the sambar. Kundapura koli saru. Kundapura koli saru is another style of chicken curry and is very popular on the Mangalorean coastal region. The gravy of the curry is made from onion, garlic, ginger and other spices along with coconut milk. The curry is perfect to have with neer dosa, roti or even rice. Alu geda. Alu geda is a dish of potatoes mashed with tomato onion and black gram they are usually served as a side dish with dosa or rice alu geda can be prepared as spicy and hot as one's preference kori gassi kori means chicken and gassi means curry for this curry succulent pieces of chicken are cooked with spices and ground fresh coconut this is a famous mangalorean recipe it is usually served with set dosa neer dosa or roti at the side mysore pak mysore pak is a simple but very famous sweet that is popular all across india mysore pak is made from three ingredients only besan that is gram flour ghee and sugar the texture of the sweet feels rich due to besan and ghee the sweet is widely distributed especially during diwali Traditional games have always been a part of Canada's rich culture. There are a variety of indoor, outdoor and board games that were popular in Karnataka. Many of these interesting games were played by both the young and the old. Kambala or Buffalo Race, a rural sport of Karnataka. This traditional sport involves farmers raising the buffaloes through tracks or plowed into a muddy field 
that is made slushy with water. The sport is a source of much enjoyment for the rural folks of the state. Lagori, a stack of stones, a ball and a focused eye is all you need to play the game of Lagori in an open courtyard. This game is quite popular in the north and eastern states of India and is fondly called Pitu. However, it is becoming increasingly popular in Mangalore and common outdoor norm amongst the youth. The game involves a pile of the flat stones and two opposing teams. A player from one team throws the ball at the pile to disturb it and runs. Kuntabille Kuntabille or hopscotch is a traditional children's game widely played in Karnataka. The game can be played alone or with the several players. It involves drawing a coat on the ground and then tossing a small object into the numbered rectangle of the coat. The Karambas were the originators of the Karnataka architecture. The most prominent basic feature of their architecture is the dome called Kadamba Shikara. The Shikara is a pyramid shaped and rises in steps without any decoration with a stupika or kalasha at the top. Dravidian architecture. Various temples in the Jaina, Shaiva and Vishnu traditions were built under the Western Ganga Sovereign Dynasty which was subordinate to Pallava from 350 to 550 under the Chalukya overlordship until 753 and under Rashtragutta overlordship until 1100. The Gomateshwara statue situated in the Shravana Balagula is a monolithic statue standing 17.6 meters high above a hill that is 618 steps climb leads to a monolith and is visible from a distance of 30 kilometers and regarded as one of the largest monolithic statues in the world. Nanjangud Temple The temple located in Nanjangud on the right bank of the Kabini River was originally built in Dravidian style by the Ganga dynasty rulers in the 9th century during their occupation of this region. It has undergone extension during the reign of Cholas, Oisalas and Odias from the 9th to 19th centuries. It is one of the biggest temples in Karnataka with an area of 560 square feet and with the Gopura of 36.576 meters height which has seven stories with the seven gold plated kalasas on the top of the gopra. The Murdeswara temple built on the Kanduka hill is surrounded on three sides by the waters of the Arabian Sea. It is a temple dedicated to the Lord Shiva with the 20 storied gopra 76.85 meters considered as the tallest temple of the 21st century. Two life-size elephants in concrete stands guard at the steps leading to the temple. A huge towering of Lord Shiva visible from great distances. Karnataka is one of the highest economic growth states in India. It ranks fifth in GDP. Karnataka is mineral rich. The state is a major source of chromite and it is one of the few states of India that produces magnesite. High-grade iron ore reserves are tapped most notably in Bellary districts in the east-central part of the state. Karnataka's many hydroelectric plants generate enough power not only to meet local needs but also to distribute to neighboring states. Historically, Karnataka has been a major exporter of commodities like coffee, spices, silk, cashew nuts, handicrafts, and agarbatis. Agriculture engages the majority of the population. The coastal plains is intensively cultivated with rice as the principal food crop, followed by sorghum and millet. Sugarcane is the main cash crop, supplemented by cashews, cardamom and grapes. Coffee and tea plantations are located on the cool slopes of the Western Ghats. Karnataka is one of the country's chief source of coffee. Karnataka is known for its well-structured educational system. The state is also formed for recruiting a maximum number of teachers in all levels of education. Karnataka also has several reputed institutions for higher education such as Indian Institute of Science, Indian Institute of Management, National Law School of the Indian University and Indian Institution of Technology, IIT Darwad. There are total of 20 government universities and 14 deemed universities. There are 25,278 junior primary schools, 
36,951 senior primary schools and 15,867 secondary schools. Karnataka provides comprehensive health care and services to the people of the state. The state government has given much priority to the health sector over the years. It took effective measures to improve the health and well-being of the citizens of Karnataka. The state government implemented several rural health programs to ensure better health care to the population living in the rural areas. According to the available data, Karnataka has a network of more than 2,346 primary health centers, 326 community health centers, 8,871 sub-centers and 20 district hospitals. Karnataka has a well-developed transport system. Bengaluru city has one of the busiest airport in India and well connected with the domestic and international flights. The state has five operational airports. Bangalore and Mangalore are the international airports in the state. Belgaum Airport, Hubli Airport, Mysore Airport, Shimoga Airport are the domestic airports in the state. Roads are the arteries of the Karnataka state and many state and national highways pass through the state. The state is well connected to its six neighboring states and other parts of India through 14 national highways. It accounts for about 6% of the national highway network in India. The new Mangalore port, Old Mangalore port, Belakeri port, Tadadi port, Honavar port, Batkal port are some of the major ports of Karnataka and it also has 12 minor ports. In case of rail transport, the headquarters of the Southwestern Railway Division of Indian Railway is located at Hubali. The total length of railway track in Karnataka is 3089 km. The Southwestern Zone Headquarters at Hubali was created in 2003, thus fulfilling a long-standing demand of the state. There are three dominant political parties in the State Assembly. The BJP, the Indian National Congress and the JDS. The CPI, CPIM and MES are the other active political entities in the state. The current Chief Minister of Karnataka is Basavaraj Bammai. On 28th July 2021, B.S. Yadurappa handed over the Chief Minister's chair to Basavaraj Swamappa Bammai. With this, Bammai became the 23rd Chief Minister of Karnataka. Basavaraj Bammai comes from a political family with his father, Yesar Bommai, having served as the Chief Minister of Karnataka from August 1988 to April 1989. He worked with the Tata Motors in Pune for a few years before taking the plunge into politics. Bommai has his route with the Janata Dal, where he served as the General Secretary from 1995 to 1996. By elections to 15 state assembly constituencies were held in Karnataka in 2019, where the ruling party needed to win 6 out of 15 seats to maintain its majority. It won 12 out of 15 seats, Congress won 2, JDS failed to open its account and one seat was won by a rebel BJP leader who contested as an independent. The leader of the opposition is Siddharamaya of the Indian National Congress and the leader of the party is DK Shokumar. Its famous leaders include Chengal Raya Reddy, D. Kumaraswamy, M. Krishna, D. Devagauda, Hardekar Manjappa, Veerappa Moili, Ramakrishna Hegde and Sarikopa Bangarappa. Some of the personalities who excelled in other domains include Basavanna, Indian philosopher, statesman and social reformer, Akka Mahadevi, leading figure of Veera Shaiva Bhakti movement of the Karnataka 12th century, Sarvanja, poet, pragmatist and philosopher in Kannada. Sir C. V. Raman, Indian physicist, whose pioneering work in the field of light scattering won in the 1930 Nobel Prize in Physics. Sir M. Vishweshwaraya, leading Indian engineer, writer, statesman and Diwan of Mysore from 1912 to 1918. Field Marshal K. M. Karyappa, the first Indian Commander-in-Chief of the Indian Army. Dr. Narasimhaya, Indian astronomer, educator, freedom fighter and Karnataka rationalist. Dr. Rajkumar, popular Kannada actor and singer. Rajnikanth, Indian film star, media personality and cultural icon. Azim H. Premji, Indian business tycoon and philanthropist. Raghul Dravid, former Indian cricketer and captain of the national test and the one dim international teams. 1000 BC, burial grounds found in Koramangala and Chikajala 
and prehistoric sites discovered near Anekal and Tabrahanali. 1640, Shivaji Maharaj marries Bangalore girl. 1812, St. Mark's Cathedral was built. 1831, the British takes over the administration. 1864, Sankey builds Kappenbach. British currency notes comes in circulation. 1881, Mysore Kingdom rendered back to Odiyars. Scenes set for making Bangalore a modern city. The first telephone arrives in the cantonment. 1905, India's first electric bulb lit in Bangalore city market. 1949, two municipalities merge laying foundations for modern Bangalore. Hampi Once the capital of the majestic Vijayanagar dynasty, Hampi is a favorite destination for tourists in Karnataka. From the intriguing ruins of the Vijayanagar kingdom to the spectacular temples or the dam by the river Tungabhadra, the old city speaks and smells of history and heritage along with the alluring beauty. Mysore One of the oldest and largest cities in Karnataka. Mysore is the best known for the Mysore palace of its grandeur. The capital city of the Mysore kingdom, the city also has a zoo, a host of temples, beautifully blending modernity with the heritage. Mysore is rich history and culture will leave you transfixed. The nearest tourist hotspot to the state capital, Nandi Hills is in no barrier when you are looking for a quick gateway. Drive to the foothills of Nandi Hills and trek to the hilltop to witness the spectacular sunrise and sunset. The tranquil lakes, beautiful temple, historic forts and captivating landscape makes it a delightful destination. Gokarna Located along the Karnataka-Gova border, Gokarna is a paradise for beach lovers if you are in Karnataka. It gives a sense of what Goa was in prime but with an experience of tranquility. The beautiful beaches and the breathtaking temples are worth a visit to the beach city. Jok Falls Situated in Shimoga district, Jok Falls come under the category of the popular tourist attractions in Karnataka. The magnificent falls created by the river Saraswati is at its peak during the monsoons. Falling from 253 meters above sea level, it is one of the highest waterfalls in India. Udupi Famous for its coastal cuisine, the coastal city of Udupi is a spectacular family destination. Take a stroll along the golden sand beaches or take a ferry to the beautiful St. Mary's Island. Enjoy the coastal delicacies and swirling on the palm and coconut groves along the sea line. This place will definitely mesmerize you to the core. The 42 km Bangalore Metro Rail Project Phase 1 Construction of 6-lane elevated road from Chalukya Circle to Hebbal Flyover in length of 6.9 km in Bengaluru district The Bhima Left Irrigation Project Development of an industrial park on 433.2 acres at Kittur in Belagavi Hubli Airport Modernization Project Implementation of Krishna Raja Sagara Irrigation Project on 26,640 acres and Amarja irrigation project and that's it for the Karnataka episode i hope you have enjoyed and learned a lot from it i'll see you on the next episode with another incredible state of india and don't forget to subscribe my channel and share it with your friends